Hey guys, Cheesette Cowan here, CEO of Real Estate. Excited to talk to you about a topic that I see come up all the time with agents pretty much every day. And that is, how do I stop comparing myself to other agents? Especially the agents that are successful, that are doing all the things that I wanna do. How do I stop comparing myself to those people? Glad you asked, let's get into it. Here's something that I noticed. When I came into real estate, I looked at the experiences of others, the success of others, but I really looked more at myself. I looked at who I was, what background I had, what transferable skills that I brought into this space. And when I say transferable skills, I think that a lot of people compare themselves only because they don't know who they are. So if I had to give you a one word answer or a one statement answer for how to stop comparing yourself to other people, it's understand who you are. Here's the magic in that. I'm not you. You're not me. What I'm able to accomplish in the real estate space, you could try your best and you're still not going to be able to accomplish it. And that goes both ways. What you are able to accomplish, I could try my best and I'll never be able to duplicate it because I'm not you. Your perception, the way you look at life, the way you approach subjects and situations is unique to you. When you come into the real estate space, I believe what God wants us to do is to manifest the best version of ourselves in this space. When we spend a lot of time looking at other people, instead of manifesting the best version of ourselves, we end up trying to be a carbon copy of them, which automatically makes us number two. We'll never be the greatest. We'll never be the best trying to be someone else. But here's what I also discovered. We have been trained, raised, guided in a space where we've always kind of had social cues telling us how we should act. And this goes from a child and I watch it because I'm a parent and I see it a lot of times with my kid. We compliment other kids and our kids subconsciously will feel like, wow, I need to be like that in order to be complimented. But what I find and I learn as coaching and as I begin to coach more people is that people are so vastly different. One of the things that I pride myself on as a coach is that I look at the individual. I look at you, who you are, what skills you have, what background you have, and I help you figure out how to win your way. Every coach doesn't do that. Every person doesn't think about that. Let me give you an example. I have a client and I love, love, love her. She is an introvert. We developed introvert strategies for her to still be able to have conversations, but the conversations are completed and done in a way that's authentic to her. That wouldn't work for me. I don't want to start conversations by text, but it works for her. And she's been able to grow her business as a result of being authentic. So she's not looking to me to say, wow, she's at, how do you do all this stuff? She's looking at herself and saying, these are the skills that I have. This is the background I have. These are the transferable skills that I'm bringing from this industry to this industry. And this is how I can win. When we get to that point where we're really just secure in who we are, and a lot of it comes back to who God created you to be. This is why I tell people it's hard for me to coach people and leave God out of it. Because I got to know how God wired you, how you were created. There are certain idiosyncrasies and things that we all have in our personality that if the right person gets a hold of it and they can help you understand how you can add that to your business, capitalize and strategize a way to win on that in your business, you will be successful. You won't have to compare yourself to other people because you'll be too busy crushing it all on your own. That's why it all goes back to who am I? Who did God create me to be? And that's introspection. That's a level of introspection that I don't think when people get into real estate, they didn't come into this for introspection. They came into it to sell and make money. But part of sales is knowing yourself. And because you know yourself, you and you know yourself deeply and in an intimate way, you can now start to get to know other people. And that's what opens up the door for real relationships because I get to show up as my authentic self and I'm and genuinely curious interested in who you are and who the people that I'm talking to are and who the people that I'm coaching are. So if you're struggling with comparison, I want to ask you this. 
What is something that you do naturally? And we probably have like three or four things that we do naturally. Write those things down. What is your thought process about different things in the marketplace, different things you see? Try to find a common thread. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. When I came into real estate, I have a business background and I tell people I'm more interested in business than real estate. This is why I call myself the CEO of real estate because I'm more interested in business than real estate. Real estate traditionally is buying, selling homes. I do that because I'm a real estate professional, but I'm more interested in the business behind that. I'm more interested in the back end. What happens when a house sells? What happens when a buyer gets ready to buy a home? What happens when a seller gets ready to sell a home? The systems, the processes behind it. The, I follow the money behind it. So I'm more, more interested in that. But here's what I learned about myself. Because I've always had a knack for business, I've started 50, 11 businesses. I probably started more business and failed at more businesses than you ever cared to imagine. All of that has led me here. But here's what I discovered about myself. I said, I don't really like opening doors, showing houses. That's not my jam. I don't like it. I like numbers. I like spreadsheets. I like contracts. So I said, I'm going to focus on sellers. I begin to kill it with sellers, not because I just was made to do that, because I started taking who I was and manifesting it in that space. But here's the thing. When I started talking to sellers, I said, how am I going to talk to these sellers, especially as a new agent? I don't have a background. I don't have a track record. I don't have anything that I can show them where I can say, you know what? This is my track record. This is what I do. I said, how can I take who I am, my transferable skill, what I like, what really excites me. Cause when we start talking about business, I get excited. And you see this every time. If you come around me, you going to have a business. Everybody that I know, I'm like Oprah with this piece. You get a business, you get a business, you get a business. I do this. I love this. So I said, how can I take that and bring it into this space? Boom. I got it. I remember when I went on the first listing appointment and I heard these words come out of my mouth. He was talking to me about interviewing another agent. And the agent had way more experience than me. I remember who the agent was. It was an agent that I looked up to. I was like, how am I going to compete with this dude? He's selling all the time. He sold 300 houses. I ain't even sold one. And I'm trying to get this appointment. I just kept it 100 with him. I said, listen, here's who I am. My name is Cheezette. I have a background in corporate sales. I have a background in marketing. When I look at your house, I don't see a house. I see a sellable asset. And when I see a sellable asset, I don't think of a realtor selling it. I think of somebody that has a background in sales and marketing, positioning yourself to get the most money in the market. Now I said the difference between what I'm offering you and what that other agent is offering you, they only have real estate experience. I have real estate experience and I have a sales and marketing background and I understand business. Your house is an appreciating asset. This is the most this is the largest financial decision you will probably ever make. Think of me as your financial planner. I'm a wealth builder. And when he started, he was like, wow, I never thought about it like that. And I was like, ooh, shoot, me either. So I had to go back home and get in the lab. And then I started really looking at your house is a sellable asset. It's not a house. You happen to live there, so you don't see the business side of it. My house right now, I, what I owe on it, I have about $400,000 in equity. That's a business. If I wanted to pull that money out to start a Fortune 500 company, I now have an asset that I can borrow against. Just because I happen to live in it, don't mistake that it's a business side to it. Why am I telling you this? Because you have a certain way that you look at life, that you look at business that's going to set you apart, that nobody else can't compete with you in that space. See, what happens when you start playing in other people's sandbox, you got to play by their rules. Now, you get over here, you play in my sandbox, my rules, I win. Because I know the rules, you don't. You're going to come in and play catch up. I'm going to come in and be playing all the way defense, offense, where you're going to come in and try to react to me. This is how agents come out and stand out in the marketplace. Who are you? It starts with that question. You have to know who you are because if you're struggling and you're trying to be like somebody else and you're looking at other people, you haven't really tapped in to all the magic and greatness that is you, you're going to struggle in sales because you're going to be at an appointment saying, I wonder what she's at would say. I wonder what Tom Ferry would say. I wonder what this person would say. No. What would you say? How would you approach the situation? Give it your authentic response and see how people respond. Because now when I work with sellers and I start talking to them about their house as an asset and how I'm the realtor that's going to help them net 30, 50, 100,000 more than the other realtors because I treat it like a business. I have a strategy in the back end, how I market, how I sell, how I don't negotiate. They like sign me up. 
killing them just because I took what I already had. I took who I am. I took who God created me to be. All the little things that I used to think were weird about me, I took that and I made it part of my business strategy. You can do the same thing. But here's the thing. You have to have somebody that's, it's hard to see yourself. So you have to have somebody that's going to look at you because this is what I tell people. You've never seen yourself. You look in the mirror, you see a reflection of yourself. I'm looking at you spot on. I can see your gifts and talents. And then there are people that are just anointed to do that. I can see your gifts and talents quicker than anybody because I'm looking at you face on. People are looking at you face on. You're looking at a reflection of yourself. So here's the thing. What environments are you in? And this is especially important for people that this is where my one-on-one -on -one coaching and we get into this kind of stuff with one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is where understanding how to tailor your business around this thing takes it off to the next level as well. Because a lot of times our systems are reflective of other people's desires, other people's things. And we're coming in trying to take their system and duplicate it and make it our own instead of understanding who we are and building our systems from scratch for us so that we can win, play by our rules. That's what I love about real estate. When I came into this space, I'm like, oh, no rules. See, in corporate America, I felt like I had rules. I felt like I needed to be in this box because I was in somebody else's sandbox. Corporate America, I did that. I played the game. This is my box, my game, my business, your box, your game, your business. But who is helping you strategize and get to the next level? That's always going to be important. Nobody gets to the next level alone. Just get that off the ground. Nobody gets to the next level alone. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how talented you are. You still have to have somebody else to unlock things in you because that's how God designed it to be. God did not design you to come here and, and be effective and efficient alone. Everything God created, he said, let us make man in our image. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. When you're trying to grow your business, who is the us? Who is the person that's responsible for helping you get to the next level? Who is the person that's responsible for helping you see the greatness in you? And a lot of times, unfortunately, those people cost money. It just is what it is because they've developed a certain skill set. They've invested in themselves in a certain way to have a certain skill set to be able to help you see yourself and stop comparing yourself to other people and help you see the awesome magic that is you. And I'm that person for a lot of people. And I'd like to be that person for you. But here's what I want you to take away from this video more than anything. Yes, I think the one-on-one -on -one coaching is something that you should definitely look into if anything that I said in this video resonates with you. But I want you to understand that you are unique. That when God created you, he created you different and authentic than anybody else. And if you will show up as yourself every time and in every space, especially in a real estate space. And don't try to be, a. am not a professional real estate agent. I'm a professional. Yes, I'm a real estate agent. Yes, sometimes the two cross, sometimes they don't. I'm not always 100% professional, right? But at the end of the day, I'm 100% me all the time. And I'm multifaceted and most of us are. I tell people I love all the way here, all the way there, and everything in between. So for me, you're going to get different things on different days, but you're still going to get the same person because I'm the person that God created me to be. Are you being the person that you are, God created you to be when you show up? That's the number one thing I tell people. They, I don't know what to post on social media. What are you talking about? What are you thinking about? Think When I'm recording content, I think about my conversations from the week, and I just build on those conversations in the videos. So again, I'm going to ask you, who's your us? Who's helping you get rid of comparison and tapping into the blessing and the awesomeness that is you? I'm going to put a link in my bio. I'm going to put a link in the description. You guys have the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one if you're considering coaching with me. I'm, I can get on a strategy call with you. I can sit down with you and help you look at your business differently because that's really what it's all about. It's changed the way you look at things and the things you look at change. So now when I look at other people, I'm looking at them for inspiration. I don't want to copy them. I just want to be inspired by what they're doing to know that it can be done one and then I can go in the lab and work on my highest self next. So click the link in the bio if you want more information on the one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you haven't joined the membership yet. And I don't know if you know this, but if you pay for the membership one, I mean, if you pay for the coaching in full, you get access to the membership as well. We do business planning. We help agents grow their business systematically and strategically so that they can make the impact that God's called them to make. Thank you for tuning in.